How does a narcissist react when you become fearless? Let's dive into that in this video. Hey, I'm Rebecca Zung, and I am a globally recognized narcissist negotiation expert. I've written a couple of best-selling books, including Slay the Bully, How to Negotiate with a Narcissist and Win. And if you haven't subscribed, I invite you to do that now. Subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can become so much more empowered and shift that dynamic with narcissists. And today we're going to talk about five ways that a narcissist reacts when you become fearless. So if you've ever wondered what happened, what was going to happen when you become fearless with narcissists, we're going to be breaking down the kind of fascinating ways that they respond when you become fearless. It's sort of like when you're dealing with a toddler having a tantrum, right? But they've been conditioning you from the beginning. You sort of went along with that conditioning when they were sort of testing you. So what happens is at the beginning of the relationship, they started love bombing you and everything was amazing. And the dopamine, you know, was going off in your brain and you were like, oh my gosh, this is the most incredible person I've ever met. And they were like, wow, you're amazing. I was in a business relationship with a narcissist and it was actually the same thing. Let's get to the next level. Let's sign contracts, people that I can introduce you to. And it was 50 emails a day and all of this flurry. And you think that it's it's going to be the most incredible relationship that you've ever been in. And, and so everything is wonderful at the beginning. And once they lock you in, that's when you start to see the tarnish. Everything kind of falls apart. The wheels start falling off. The, the car at that point. And that's when you start to, as the empath, start to see, uh, okay, there's stories or something is going on and your boundaries start to get pushed because they had something going on in their family. So you start picking up the slack for things and I will handle all of this for you. Or maybe their stories didn't add up on something. Or maybe they swooped in at a time that you were extremely vulnerable and they're handling things for you. And now, you know, you're wondering, where did they go? The way a narcissistic relationship starts is always either they're the hero or the victim. Things shift at the beginning, you know, in the middle of the relationship after the beginning. And so when you start to see that bloom coming off the rose and and now you have kind of shifted into that discard phase of the relationship and you want to change how things are going to be and you now want to become fearless and you want to change the rules of the game, the first thing that they're going to want to do is kind of become like a toddler having that tantrum and go, I'm going to push back again. And they're going to act like that toddler again. They'll think, I just need to scream louder. I just need to scream longer. I just need to kick more. It's sort of like that shock and disbelief. So the first thing you're going to see from them is that sort of shock and disbelief, like what's going on here? I don't like what's happening. I don't like this shift in the wind. I don't like this change. You'll start to see them have some sort of love bombing again. They might try to get things back the way they were. I, I, I like things the way they were. So either they will go back to the future faking that, that always worked in the past. They'll kind of go back to the control tactics that worked before, sort of like a stun gun to them. They're not going to be quite certain about what to do at that beginning stage. So that's number one. The second thing that's going to happen is, okay, now I'm no longer stunned. So let me intensify the manipulation. The second thing that's going to happen is intensify manipulation. So let me double down on whatever it is that I was doing before. Double down on control, 
double down on manipulation tactics, if they were controlling you before through text messages, controlling you before through fear tactics, controlling you before through intimidation, through gaslighting, through how it was that they were treating you before, whatever it was that they were doing before to keep control of you, you will see more of that, you know, so whatever it was that they were doing to have control of you in the past, you might see an intensified version of that more threat, whatever it was that you might see a heightened version of that, because, you know, they're fear based individuals, they'll be coming from that place of fear, and continuing to be from that place of fear, but heightened more, more of it. That's what you'll see next. The third thing that you're going to see is, okay, this isn't working. So I'm going to go now to anger. I'm going to go to now to aggression. Now you're going to go into a, more of a critical phase. If you do this, I'm going to do this. Now you're going to start to see some threats, some guilt measures, or maybe even some covert tactics. I'm going to take the kids. I'm going to take money. If it's a business partnership, threats of I'll take all of the employees. This is going to be a critical phase to navigate because now you might start to see the birth of a smear campaign. They might start to say, I'll make sure you never work in this town again. I will tell everybody how what a horrible person you are. They might empty threats, the things that they might say. This is where they start to heighten their aggression. You know, if you guys have seen these sorts of things, I'd love to know. Drop a comment below. Let me know what kinds of things you guys have seen. Let me know. I've seen it. Put it in the comments below. And if you are dealing with this, make sure that you grab my free Crush My Negotiation Prep Worksheet. It is totally free. You will definitely want to grab that, especially if you're negotiating with a narcissist. WinMyNegotiation.com. Make sure you grab that as well. Make sure you join my free private Facebook group, Narcissist Negotiators at Rebecca Zung. Links to all of that is below as well. Next is the attempts to gaslight you, diminish your confidence. Now it's going to be, I'm going personal attacks on you, making sure that they undermine you, undermine your strength, undermine anything that you're trying to do. If you are starting a new endeavor, that's going to fa definitely fail. If you are with a new business partner, that person's a loser. Whatever it is that you're trying to do, that's going to be blown up in smoke. Everything you are doing, they are going to go after. You're never going to make it without me. No one ever is ever going to believe you. No one's ever going to hire you. Anything you're going to, going to try to do, they're going to try to get you at every turn. I'll make sure that the kids are turned against you. I'll make sure you never see your kids. I'll make sure you're out on the street. Whatever it is, they're going to try to undermine you. So that's the next thing. The final piece that they are going to try to do when you try to become fearless and on your own is they will retreat and then also seek new targets. If they really think that you are completely done, then they may just give up on you and go look for new supply. But if that is the case, it will never completely give up on your, you as a source of supply as long as you are a source of supply. And what I mean by that is people think that narcissists just want to win. And the reason why you cannot finish negotiating with them is because diamond level supply, which is what I call diamond level supply, which is how they look to the world, their image is just, which is winning. That's just one piece of the equation. The other piece of the equation is manipulating you, seeing you squirm, jerking you around. That is what I call coal level supply. And as long as they are getting that, 
they will never let you go. And so what you have to do is figure out what source of supply is more important for them to keep than the supply that they get from jerking you around and then threaten that source of supply. And that is my slay method. And that is how you will be done with this thing. Otherwise, they will continue to move goalposts. Always, always, always. And that's why you can never be done. And this is whether you're negotiating with them in a formal setting or just in your family. The slay method works, all right? So grab my free crush, crush My Negotiation Prep Worksheet, winmynegotiation.com. That is your way to get started. And if you found this helpful, make sure you like this video. Make sure that you share it with other people because that will help you get started. And make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell because that will help you. Your engagement is also what propels us to go forward. It helps us build community, which we want to support you in lifting you up, grabbing your authentic power and becoming the true version of who you are meant to be and becoming powerful and negotiating for life. This is not just negotiating in a formal setting, but sometimes the very first negotiation you have to do is with your own self in the morning, your mind and is so, so important. Your mindset is so, so important. And keeping your, your thoughts in check is so, so important. Knowing that you are the most powerful one and taking back your power is so, so important. Stay strong, stay fearless. And the next video that I want you to watch is 10 phrases that narcissists hate. Because that's going to be really, really powerful when you want to make sure that you become fearless against narcissists. So I will see you in that next video, 10 phrases that narcissists hate. And remember that today is a great day to start negotiating your best life. And I cannot wait to support you in helping you do that. So I'll see you in that next video. And remember, they only win if you give in. I'll see you in that next video.